Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Or if you're brand new, thanks for tuning in. Who am I? I am of course, Keenan H. Crotty, AKA Keen Man. As you can tell, I have shaved the scraggly pube beard. I got your dick hair all over my fucking face. <laughs> that was not on purpose. So I was gonna shave it down to kind of that suave, scruffy type look. Who's scruffy looking? But I ended up cutting it too short. So I'm gonna let it grow back, but I won't let it grow back to its previous state. That is a gift to all humanity. Now we are already pretty far into the first month of the year 2021. So unless you've been living under a rock, a lot of things have happened to make this a rather tumultuous start to the beginning of this new year. I didn't start this channel with the explicit idea of sharing my own personal beliefs, whether that be political or otherwise, though I sort of already upset that trend by my very first video getting a little bit into that. But I navigated it through the thing that I really started this channel for, me just talking about the stuff that I love, pop culture type things from movies, video games, music, and etc. With everything that's been going on in the last few weeks, the movie that came into my head is one of my favorite movies, and I think is probably one of the few movies that I would say is literally perfect. Oh my god. Steven Spielberg's 1998 World War II classic, Saving Private Ryan. And uh, during these times, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole, and for whatever reason, this movie popped up into my head, and perhaps it's because of what's been going on, and I ended up watching a lot of reactions action videos of people who this was their first time ever watching this movie. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, there is a character who ends up becoming probably the most hated character in the movie, and that's saying much, the movie has literal Nazis in it. But as I kept watching the reactions, a lot of people reacted in a way that on the surface level feels like the right emotional response to have to that character. But it was always something that kind of bothered me. It was something that I never felt was right. And I felt more sympathetic to Upham than others. There, there was something about him that was wrong and about the way people reacted to him that I felt was wrong. And I couldn't quite put my finger on what that feeling, what that thing was. So I ended up going online and doing some research about what other people thought about the character Upham. And I actually came across a very wonderful article, basically a scholarly article. Nerd! And the article led me into the right direction of why I realized the character of Upham should very well be disliked, but he's disliked for the wrong reason. And in this video, I want to use that article and my own personal opinions to go through and discuss the character of Upham and why he's hated and why I think he's hated for the wrong reason and what I think that says about American culture itself. Oh. Yeah! It may very well lead to some insight, or at least my own personal insight, of where I think the country is today. For those of you who haven't seen this movie, uh, this video is obviously going to go into spoilers. <laughs> about the movie. So come and join me as we talk about Saving Private Ryan and why I think you should hate Upham, but why you hate him for the wrong reason. In order to understand both why so many people hate Upham, but why I also think you should hate him for a different reason than most people do, we should probably talk about who is Upham in the first place. Upham is played by an actor who, unfortunately, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but I will conveniently put his name somewhere around here. His character is introduced after the first 15 minutes of the movie, the harrowing and incredibly intense Normandy D-Day invasion scene, where we see Captain Miller, played by Tom Hanks and his squad, storm the beach and take it, but at great human cost. Upham is introduced after that scene. It's after Captain Miller has been assigned his mission to find the titular Private Ryan, played by Matt Damon. Now, in order to find Captain Miller, they're obviously going to be traveling into France, but they're also going to be traveling deep into to German held territory and their translator died when they stormed the beach. So that's where we meet up. Captain Miller goes to a field office that is set up sometime after the beach has been taken where we find that Upham is one of the people doing clerical work, possibly even translation work. And he's recruited because he can speak both German and French. When we first meet Upham, we get everything we need to know about him in that first interaction. He is a shy and meek and quiet person and he's very neurotic and clumsy and he's 
he's obviously quite bookish and smart and whatnot. He is falling all over himself trying to gather his equipment once he realizes he's being recruited to go into the field and he immediately protests that he's never seen combat. He hasn't even fired his gun since basic training and he's falling all over himself trying to gather his equipment including equipment that he doesn't even need such as his typewriter. So we learn right away that he is not someone that you necessarily want in your side in a gunfight. Throughout the movie we get this reinforced more and more and more. We see when he first meets the squad that he tries to introduce himself and they all blow him off. He has the vibe of the high school freshman who's trying to talk to all the upperclassmen on his first day. He doesn't seem to understand the gravity of the situation that they're in. He mentions that he's going to be writing a book and he's going to be writing this book on the brotherhood that is formed by men in combat. And they all laugh at him because he's obviously never even seen combat. So he has this strange detached academic viewpoint of warfare because that's all that he's had. He's only ever seen it in newsreels. He's only seen it from a distance. He's only seen it in, in literature and such. So he's automatically kind of outside of the realm of the soldiers. And I think a lot of people when they watch the movie dislike him already because of that, because he's simply naive. Now, I don't think that's a reason why you should dislike him. I myself am more of a artsy type person and I feel actually quite sympathetic toward him. He wasn't trained to be in combat because of his translation skills. That's clearly and also just his general physique. You can tell that he wasn't ever supposed to be put into a combat situation. He was only ever intended to be in these auxiliary positions. And so he's with these other soldiers. They instantly blow him off and kind of dislike him. And I think the audience takes the viewpoint of these soldiers because we're introduced to them first. And so I understand their initial possible dislike of him from the very beginning, but it, it does get worse. Throughout the movie, he is sheltered from the, the combat. He doesn't actually actively participate in any of the events that they have as his fellow squad mates are killed. Because he's so insulated and from it, we feel like he's not holding up his part and that Upham is still uh, an outsider looking in on the group. And that probably helps build up the animosity toward him too. And also he has just a very unrealistic and even romanticized viewpoint of warfare. For example, he is the only person who seems to believe that the mission that they're on is worthy because he, he believes very strongly in the codes and the ideals and the morals of American culture, of American duty, of the military duty that they're called upon. America, fuck yeah, so lick my and in one scene, he's talking with Captain Miller. Upham quotes Ralph Waldo Emerson. In this poem that he quotes, the poem is about how your true inner man, how your true self gets released through combat, that warfare is almost this noble, chivalrous type activity that really lets your inner valor come out. Come, Patsy. Oh, oh, I see. Running away, eh? You yellow bastards! Come back here and take what's coming to you! I'll bite your legs off! And Captain Miller, who we find out later in the movie is an English teacher himself, sort of scoffs at this because he understands how childish and how totally remote from the reality that that could possibly be. He realizes that warfare is not this beautiful sort of chivalrous thing. It is not this thing that helps bring out the inner man in you. In fact, it does everything it can to take the humanity out of you. And we see this time and time again in the movie that the movie does not want to glorify war. I love this movie because because it is a fervently anti-war movie. And I feel that some people like the movie because they think the combat and the guns and all that stuff is really cool. And while on some level it is, they're missing the point that this movie is not about the glorification of war whatsoever. It's decidedly against it. The opening 15 minutes of that movie is as intense and grotesque as it is because it's to show you how war is literal hell. That is such a cliche to say, but that movie does it better than almost any other movie in existence of showing you how awful warfare truly is. In that moment, it didn't matter about your patriotism. It didn't matter about your duty to America. It didn't matter about your nationality, what you were doing. It was simply about survival. It was about Captain Miller trying to do his best to keep himself and more importantly, his men alive. Biggest cost of war is taking away what it truly means to be a human. At the very beginning of this movie, we see Captain Miller witnesses two American soldiers approaching two surrendering German soldiers. Now, what's interesting is that what they're saying is in subtitles, so we have no idea what they're actually saying. But if you look into it, you find out that they're actually speaking Polish and that they are saying that they are prisoners of war who were recruited and forced to fight for the Germans, which was something that the Germans did many, many times. They essentially conscripted people from territories that they had taken over and forced them to fight. And so they were saying that 
you know, we're Polish prisoners of war. We we don't want to do this. We're trying to escape is basically the gist of what they're saying. But two American soldiers just callously and coldly shoot them and then make fun of the situation. They make light of it. And Captain Miller only looks and stares at them with this sad look of loss and pain on his face. And it's a very brief moment, but to me, it's key to understanding then what happens at the end and why we should hate Upham so much. Captain Miller is disappointed because he is seeing the true loss of war, the fact that we have lost not just lives, but our very humanity. These guys just callously took the lives of people that admittedly they didn't know were innocent, but it doesn't matter. They were surrendering. They were giving up. They're still human beings, and yet they killed them in cold blood. That is essentially murder. They murdered them. Everybody else that Captain Miller and his group and squads had to kill on that beach were because it was survival. It was the only thing that they could do. They were put into this horrible situation by the powers that be above them in the government and whatnot and put in this situation where they either had to live or they had to die but these two people didn't have to do that they didn't have to kill those polish soldiers they were surrendering this was a totally different situation no one was in a life or death situation the war that they've been in all that death that they've seen has caused them to lose sight of that those were human beings anyway i went into a long tangent um so Upham's romanticized viewpoint of warfare, this sort of academic viewpoint, it seems so naive and seems so wrong to the audience because we have been shown scenes throughout the movie showing how wrong that kind of viewpoint really is. Now let's get into why people hate Upham. Well, after they found Private Ryan, Captain Miller's group decides to stay in the little town where they're located in order to stop Germans from crossing this bridge. And Upham is actually for the first time going to be very much actively employed in this battle, but still outside of combat. He's been given the job to carry bandoliers, strips of bullets for a heavy machine gun, and he's to deliver that to a machine gun nest that his fellow squad mates have set up. He's still not really supposed to be firing the gun, but he's definitely going to be more in the combat than he ever has been throughout this movie. So the battle starts, most of the soldiers start dying, most of his fellow squad mates start getting taken out one by one, though they're taking out many of the Germans at the same time. The nest that Upham is supposed to deliver the bullets to is starting to get more and more overrun and pressed by the Germans and their heavy machine guns and their tanks. And while Upham is trying to get to them, he has to stop because a tank and some Germans are coming in. So he temporarily stops there, but he stops there long enough to allow a couple German soldiers to go up the steps to where his squad mates are and they need and they need more ammo. The couple of German soldiers come in and they end up killing one German soldier, but another kills one of his squad mates and only one squad mate is left. And this squad mate that's left along with this German soldier have a fight with each other. They fight one-on-one -on -one, and they're going at each other and you hear him screaming for Upham, you know, to come up and, and help them out and whatnot. And Upham does slowly go up the steps, but he's paralyzed in fear. He is so shocked, so immobilized by his own fear and of the whole situation that he can only just stand there and basically cry as he's listening to one of his squad mates, arguably a person that he's sort of grown to have a friendship with, suffer through this. And eventually his squad mate does lose the fist fight, does lose the fight and gets a knife stabbed into him by the German soldier. And so the audience hates Upham at this moment because he could have had the courage. He could have done something. He could have gone up there and he could have killed the German soldier and prevented his squad mate from dying. And I totally understand that. I totally agree that he was a coward and that he could have done something. And it's only driven in the knife, uh, figuratively speaking, is only driven in further because the German soldier comes out and Upham surrenders. He he presses up against the wall and he holds his hands up. He doesn't want to get killed either. And the German soldier recognizes how totally helpless Upham is that he doesn't even bother. He just walks right past Upham and, and rejoins the battle. I mean, he doesn't even feel like killing him. It'd be like killing a child, an innocent, a civilian. He's essentially a non-combatant. But the thing I, I want to say is that I get it. He could have done it, but like I said earlier, he was never really intended to be a combatant. I can understand that this was a lot to put on a guy who was never really intended for this position. We witness the fragility of this romantic viewpoint that he held. A lot of people hate Upham for that reason. A thing that's interesting, though, is that a lot of people give Upham a pass of sorts just shortly after so I have to go back and give some context there's a pivotal moment in the movie where Captain Miller takes his squad and assaults a, a satellite station that has a German squad waiting there to ambush people and during the assault their medic is shot and ends up being killed and there is one German soldier that is left the squad wants to execute him they want to kill him but up him he protests against that he says that he's a prisoner that it's against the the moral thing to do to kill a prisoner 
and Captain Miller struggles with this and the whole group argues about, you know, what they need to do. And eventually Captain Miller does release the German soldier and tells him that he needs to go turn himself into the next American patrol that he that he finds. And a lot of people in the reaction videos I saw felt that it was the wrong thing to do. They were like, no, you should kill him, shoot him, get him now, kill that bastard and whatnot. He, he killed your own. And I can yet again, I can understand it. I can understand that their anger and their fury in that moment. But just like the soldiers from the beginning, that would be murder. It's no longer about survival in that point. In that point, it's only about revenge. It's only about killing someone because they did some kind of grievance to you. That German soldier didn't kill the medic because he, he wanted to, because it was out of revenge or for money or profit or, or for any other reason or because he just liked it. He did it because it was the only thing he could do. So Upham actually has the right idea. Upham is correct that you should not have done that. That is the right thing to do. Captain Miller puts it best. So I guess I've changed some. Sometimes I wonder if I've changed so much my wife is even going to recognize me whenever it is I get back to her. And how I'll ever be able to to tell her about days like today. I just know that every man I kill, the farther away from home I feel. This war has already taken so much out of him, but he doesn't want to lose that, that essential thing that makes him be a person. He knows that academically and morally and ph philosophically and ethically that that's what you're supposed to do, but he doesn't even understand the human cost about it necessarily. After that long tangent, we find that some of the German soldiers that are attacking the Captain Miller and Upham squad at the very end includes that German soldier. He never turned himself in. Now, admittedly, would you turn yourself into an enemy that may very well shoot you even know you're trying to surrender. He he did what he needed to do to survive, so I don't blame him. And and then of course, in a great ironic movie type twist, that soldier that was released by Captain Miller ends up being the soldier that shoots and then ultimately kills Captain Miller himself. After the battle is done, the Americans come in and they win because reinforcements come in at the last minute, but Captain Miller has already died. Upham has been hiding, but he jumps up as the German soldiers are trying to retreat and he holds them at gunpoint and they're, they're surrendering. And the so German soldier that they met earlier recognizes Upham and, you know, kind of pleads with him, hey, you know me, just I'm going to surrender. And Upham shoots the character, that character only, that German soldier, and lets all the other German soldiers go. And in the movie reactions I watched, in the reactions, everybody sort of cheered. They still hated Upham, but they thought that that made him sort of at least get a little bit of an up. That, my friends, is the thing that you should hate Upham for. It's not because he was a coward. The thing that should absolutely make you not like Upham is for killing that German soldier. And it's for the same exact reason that I've just been talking about earlier that Captain Miller witnessed and felt disgusted by is because the only time Upham ever fires his gun, the only time he takes a human life is in a moment of revenge. And it's revenge that is built upon his own guilt for his own failure of doing his duty. In the t time where he could have killed someone and it could have been, you know, counted as part of his duty, as part of his service to just survive even, not even his service to his country, not service to his battle, but service to his own fellow mankind, his own brothers that he wanted to join. And instead, he kills somebody in a moment that has nothing to do about survival. There was nothing that needed to be done. Instead, he murders that guy just because he felt guilty about his previous actions. Even the Germans, we don't even see this with the Germans. He's the only character who kills somebody outside of combat. Well, except for those two soldiers at the beginning. He kills somebody through murder, not through combat, not because of survival. He murders somebody. And it goes against the very principles that he himself was espousing this whole movie. This whole movie, he's talking about warfare, bringing the honor, the valor out of man, about the brotherhood that's built up. And he throws all that away. And by that one action, he loses his humanity. He loses the very thing that Captain Miller and everybody else wanted to try and maintain their human dignity. Upham betrays everything that he ever believed with, with that single bullet. It might feel emotionally justified, but it's the wrong thing to do. And it totally takes out whatever humanity he had. All those morals and all those things that made Upham who he was, as much as you might disagree with the way that he conducted himself before then, you could say that he was still a good person. And the reason why audiences almost sort of give Upham a pass for when he kills is because it says something about our American culture as a whole. America, fuck yeah! 
love vigilante justice. We love people getting retribution. I mean, think of how every action movie, how every superhero movie, how every Western basically has some vigilante hero type character that goes in and kills the bad guys and saves the day as sort of revenge of what the bad guys did. We're a very eye for an eye kind of people. But as Ben Franklin said, eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. In the real world, vigilante justice is almost never something that we should cheer for. You could argue that vigilante justice is what led to lynch mobs. Vigilante justice is what leads to people going on mass shootings. Yes, you could argue that they had mental disorders and they obviously clearly did, but they also did it because they believed that they were trying to right a wrong that no one else was righting. And you could see that in the Capitol riot that happened. That violence was instigated by a sense of vigilante justice, that they needed to go put the law in their own hands, that they needed to go do something in order to stop something. We can't let people go out and seek vengeance whenever they feel like it. This own individualized based revenge to happen. If we're ever to maintain any kind of semblance of a human society, of any kind of human civility, we can't let people take a life just simply because it seems emotionally satisfying. Because just as Captain Miller said, every life we take, no matter how good we might feel about it on some emotional level, is still a life. It's still a human life that we've decided to end. And that's going to have a cost on you. And if it doesn't have a cost on you, there's something very wrong with you. And there has to be a better way. And the movie makes a good point. It makes an excellent point that good decisions sometimes don't turn out right. There are multiple times where people in the movie suffer or die from doing what is the more human moral thing to do. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you might suffer, that you might die. What matters is that you kept your humanity. Because if you did live, you would have to live the rest of your life knowing that you did that horrible shitty thing. Tom Sizemore's character, who I don't remember their name, but I'll put it up there, says it best. Someday we might look back on this and decide that saving Private Ryan was the one decent thing we were able to pull out of this whole god-awful shitty mess. That's what I was thinking, sir. Like you said, Captain, we do that, we all earn the right to go home. And he's correct in that that whole movie shows how war is a horrible thing done to do horrible things and to other people that are outside of your control. But why you're in that horrible situation or in any any horrible situation that you're in, if you can do your best to maintain who you are, to maintain your humanity and what it means for you to be a person, then at least you've done something. Upham fails in that instant. All the other characters in that movie are heroes because even though they may have died, and even though they may have killed people, they kept their integrity. They kept who they were as people and they didn't resort to the more base evil tendencies that we wanted. Upham is the only major character we see that falls prey to that. We might feel emotionally good because it's a movie and it's a contrivance and because we've been kind of culturally sort of made to idolize people who do take that kind of action in their own hands and that want to, you know, have vigilante justice. But vigilante justice in the real world is not that far away from committing murder and other atrocities and other acts of violence that we see to this very day. Well, that was a darker topic than my usual ones, but I think it was an important one. It's that is how I sort of work through many different problems is through the examination of art and artwork and things in pop culture. And that's the beauty of many of those things is that it allows us sort of a safe way to navigate through very difficult topics and situations. And I hope you realize that through this video that Upham is a coward and is definitely someone you should hate, but you should hate him for a different reason. You should hate him for the fact that he lost what it means to be a person. Anyway, thank you for joining me in this video. I hope that you learned something. If not, at least learn something about me. I hope you stay well and I hope you stay safe. Of course, please make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Any and all support that you can give me is greatly appreciated. And at the very least, I like knowing that some of you are out there uh, enjoying my content. Well, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Adios.